you've got to veer them away from the idea of patriotism towards their country, uh, sovereignty of the nation, a belief in absolutes, right and wrong. You you cannot expect to have a smoothly running world socialist system if you have people out there who are going to object to what you're trying to do. So you have to brainwash. The New Freedom Commission is a federal program to mandate the bogus screening and compulsory medication of children from infancy through 18 years of age in this country through the use of completely inappropriate screening techniques. Any child who deviates from the prescribed feeling and thought pattern that is allowed to them will be compulsorily medicated even over the objection of their parents with dangerous unproven and untested psychiatric medications to control their thoughts their behaviors and to impede their emotional development this is a federally mandated program the children now are signing what is called an assent form, not a consent form, but a passive consent form saying that they will be involved. They have all kinds of um, incentives to join. They give them pizza parties for teen screen people. They give them uh, movie rental coupons if they'll do the teen screen. And what teen screen is, is, is it asks them a number of questions. Have you ever been depressed? Are you afraid to speak in a group? Do you feel like your parents are abusing you? Those questions then go in to be analyzed and a diagnosis is made from those questions. Parents who have found out about this are now suing. They're now very upset going to the school systems and saying, how dare you do this to my child without my knowledge? I think it's important to understand that most of the educational programs that are implemented in the United States stem from the National Education uh, Association and the NEA was actually founded by uh, John D. Rockefeller. And John D. Rockefeller, I think, voiced the uh, beliefs of this ruling elite that wants to try to homogenize our education system when he was quoted as saying, I don't want a nation of thinkers, I want a nation of workers. So I think the education system is not only pushing people into a socialized uh, version of government, but also uh, dumbing the individual down to the point to where he, he'll be a good worker in the factory or he'll be a good worker at, uh, in Silicon Valley. He may know a lot about computers, uh, but he is not going to have a classic education that would allow him to take all of the facets of the culture and the society and put it together and really form an intelligent opinion as to what's really going on and what might be in the best interest of the individual. One of the topics um, that is taboo is any discussion whatsoever about shadow government. Now, uh, 10 years ago in the early 90s, when people called in mainstream talk shows, uh, and brought up issues like the, uh, the Council on Foreign Relations or the Trilateral Commission. In some cases, there was one major talk show that, <laughs> who proudly says he's got half of his brain tied behind his back, actually said on the radio that there was no such thing as the Council on Foreign Relations, and anybody brought that up was a conspiracy, wacko, coot, wingnut, et, et, et cetera, et cetera. Now we all know, of course, that the Council on Foreign Relations is a very real organization. It's been around for a long, long time. America forms its opinions by information that's provided to them. And common sense will tell you that if the information that you get from your mainstream media is misinformation or disinformation or even a lie, then common sense will tell you that the opinion is an extension of the lie. Now, unfortunately, America and indeed the rest of the world is getting information that's being massaged, it's being spun, it's being prepared for them for consumption. And when we watch the mainstream media, it's really easy to recognize this after a while because 
you know, the mainstream media usually carries three major stories as a continuing uh, ongoing investigation. And of course, they intersperse other unimportant stories in between. So while America is continually watching stories about Michael Jackson or Scott Peterson or Natalie Holloway or sometimes they'll get really controversial and they'll talk about some of the scandals in Washington, uh, the Valerie Plame issue. There are all kinds of things happening behind the scenes while America and the rest of the world focuses on these big three news stories that are of course you know, paraded in front of America 24-7 and told that this is real news. Media blackout is nothing more than media control. It is the determination of what the public will hear, what they will not hear, and how to make it sound in such a way that the public will accept it. And it is totally against everything this country stands for, but the average person doesn't even know that they're experiencing it anytime they turn on the TV. Well, I think that there's two things going on really there's the one aspect of media where it's a business and they're gonna put out whatever sells the most and there are some who would say that well people just like the gruesome what makes them afraid uh, so that's why you see that more than any other kind of news and then there's the other theory that there's actually a mass conditioning going on so ever since industrialization and when people couldn't control their populations through physical force uh, there needed to be a measure of brainwashing so that people would basically enslave themselves and think that they were happy. And if people think they're happy, why would they ever rebel? I don't trust the media because I think they create the news rather than reporting it. I assume that consumers are supposed to have brains and use them when they get news. So of course you should be thinking when you're getting news and not just trusting and to me that's just axiomatic for listening to another person so it's not so much that I'm more taken in by news people than anyone else um, our president said a couple of weeks ago we don't torture people and you wonder why he thinks we don't torture people since most of the rest of the world thinks we do including many Americans and he also said if we're doing it to squash terrorism it's legal well, Richard Nixon said if a president does it, it's legal. That's just not something to be accepted without thinking. I don't entirely trust the information I get from the mass media. I take it all with a grain of salt. Okay, we say we've got freedom of press in this country, and some folks have said that uh, you've got freedom of press as long as you own it. Well, who owns the media? And when I say that, not I, I mean it not literally, but as far as who controls the information that goes out in the media. An example, NBC is owned by General Electric, and General Electric is one of the uh, top ten, if not top five, defense contractors. Is NBC going to expose a news story that might in some way impede a contract negotiation which can mean a lot of money for General Electric? I don't think so. So the point here is that we have elected officials, both Republicrats and Demopublicans, that cater to who? Certainly not the common people. We don't have the huge amounts of money to contribute to their election campaigns. The people that contribute the most amount of money are the corporations. And so that uh, representative or senator is going to do what is going to be in the best interest of those corporations. So if the corporations are controlling and influencing our elected officials, we must also take a look at the mainstream media. Who pays the bulk of the advertising dollars that keep the mainstream network news going? <laughs> it's the major corporations. So what we have now is we have corporate control of elected officials, corporate control of the media, and this is why some people are now calling it the corporate Borg, because they have assimilated several different areas of our entire society. The corporations control agriculture, technology, manufacturing, industry, education, communication. They control our elected officials. This is not a government of, by, and for the people. It is a government of, by, and for the corporation. And by definition, when business controls government, that is inescapably fascism.